Hi friends, welcome back. So today I would like to talk to you about the subject of uh, demonology and I'm going to cover this in two parts. The first part I'm going to do is about uh, the fall of Lucifer, um, how he became Satan and basically what that means for you and me and how we've got to obviously live our lives and making sure that we're going to be um, sort of like um, free from attacks and the other thing I was going to do is do another video on demons um, and the uh, role of demons um, in on the earth today. Um, there's absolutely millions of them and basically I can't cover these two in both uh, in one video so I'm going to do it in two. Now I have to say I had a terrible Sunday last week. I try I did this whole video on this and unfortunately I had my own challenges. Satan doesn't like being exposed. Anytime um, the kingdom of you know so-called Satan um, is exposed he does actually challenge people he does fight back now I did this message uh, in so many different parts because my video camera was not working even though it was charged I don't know what happened but three times four times I recorded it and then when I went to put it on it would not put on so it was just really challenging I went to bed really late on Sunday and was very tired for work the next day and it kind of really got it you know got me upset so I'm coming back today with a vengeance and fighting and I will expose the kingdom of Satan so um, I'm just going to get on with this now to do it really quickly so um, the fair, obviously I want to talk to you about um, you know who Satan is and how he became Satan he wasn't always Satan basically the Bible I'll tell you a little bit of background and then I'll read Bible verses for you the Bible says that Satan was actually a very very a powerful angel once called Lucifer and Lucifer had a very very important job in the kingdom of heaven he was one of God's closest angels he was actually the top ranked top general angel he was known as the cherub angel and the cherubs uh, were after the seraphims the bible talks about certain ranks of angels the seraphims covered the throne of God the cherubs were also in the covering of the throne as well so Satan is uh, sorry so Lucifer was described as a cherub so he was a very and not only that uh, the Bible says he was an anointed cherub which I will go into and explain to you what that means and what happens is we see in the Bible I'm just going to basically generalize this but I think if you can get a Bible and read it for yourself it will really really help you basically the Bible talks about uh, how Lucifer was um, you know one of the highest ranks angels then he was thrown down from heaven to earth because he fell and he became Satan and then what happened is Adam and Eve gave him dominion uh, by believing in his lie and by not listening to God so they gave him dominion over the earth so now he's gone from the earth to the seventh, second heavens and then the Bible says um, on the last date of his obviously um, time he will be thrown down from the seven heavens to the sec to the third heavens. I'm going to have to explain this. The first heavens are, sorry, the first heaven is the earth. The second heavens is what's in the air between earth and obviously ours, the air. So that's the second heavens. The third heavens is where God dwells. Now, Satan originally dwelt in the third heavens where God was. Then God threw him out of heaven and he basically threw him to the earth and there's a reason why he was thrown to the earth but it's it's the reason has to be another bible study on its own basically he was serving god not only in heaven but the earth did exist before humanity uh, so that's the reason he was thrown on the earth and when god created adam and eve after satan was thrown down on the earth what happened was that uh, satan deceived them and they had dominion, uh, Adam and Eve had dominion over the earth, but Satan uh, basically uh, gave them a lie and they believed in his lie and he they gave him dominion. So now he's in the second heavens and he's actually operating in the world. And what the Bible says is that he, is, uh, he, he has dominion over uh, anyone who's not God's. Um, so God is saying to us that if unless we are vigilant and we actually receive Jesus and we come to him, what happens is we're actually under the dominion of sin. Why? Because Adam and Eve believed in his light and the, chil the children were born in sin. And basically what happens is that if you have not received Jesus, 
what happens is that you willfully um, are under Satan's dominion, under him, because what he, he is doing is he's controlling in the second heavens and he has lots of lots of fallen angels and demons who are operating in his kingdom he has a whole kingdom behind him guys and it is not a joke it is real uh, there is there was a spiritual warfare in heaven before humanity was created this spiritual warfare has basically carried on after human beings were made and we are um, living in ignorance not understanding half of the times what we're fighting with there's spiritual attacks going on demonic attacks daily you know satan doesn't care whether you are ignorant or vigilant what he does is he throws a punch at you and if you don't know who god is then you will take that punch and unfortunately in a lot of cases a lot of us give up on life because of these things so um i just want to read a bible verse on how satan fell from you know what he was and how he fell from heaven um so i'm going to um start with i believe it's going to be ezekiel ezekiel 28 13 and i'm just going to take you there so this is the this is what the bible says about say uh, sorry lucifer before he became satan um it says how he was you know he was glorious he had you know he had beauty on him he was made in perfection guys lucifer was made in perfection he had beauty he had everything he had he was i'll read it 28 it says uh here oh actually i start with uh i'll start with the other one which is um isaiah 14 12 because with that one you, first you know his character then you will know obviously how he fell um, so in Isaiah 14, it says, how you have fallen from heaven, O shining star, son of the morning. That's, that's how it's referred to Lucifer, shining star, son of the morning. You have been thrown down to the earth, you who destroyed the nations of the world. For you said to yourself, I will ascend to heaven and set my throne above God's stars. I will Proceed on the proceed on the mountains of the gods far away in the north. I will climb to the highest heavens and be like the most uh, high, high God Himself. Instead, you were brought down to the place of the dead, down to its lowest lowest depths. Everyone there will stare at you and ask, "Can this be the one who shook the earth and made the kingdoms of the world tremble?" Tremble. So that's one thing it says. The other thing it says here is you were an anointed cherub okay this is lucifer again in ezekiel 28 14 it says you were an anointed cherub i will talk about that in a minute who covers i established you you were on the holy mountain of god you walked back and forth in the midst of fiery stone you were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you by the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence within and you sinned. Therefore, I cast you as a profane thing out of the mountain of God and I destroyed you, O covering cherub. So he was a cherub, okay? So his uh, rank as an angel was a cherub. From the midst of the fiery stones, your heart was lifted up because of your beauty, and you corrupted your wisdom for the sake of splendor i cast you to the ground i laid you before kings that they may they might gaze at you you defile your sanctuaries by the multitude of your iniquities uh, by the iniquity of your trading therefore i brought fire from your midst it devoured you and i turned you to ashes upon the earth so he threw him on the earth god threw him now something interesting about this is first i'm going to talk about uh, what Lucifer did. Lucifer was an anointed cherub. He wasn't just a cherub, you know, he was an anointed cherub. He covered the throne of God. He brought praises and worship to God. The word anointed means that he had something special, you know, he, he brought praise and worship. He was an angel of music. He was an angel of, uh, what would you call it? Um, I don't know, a, a band orchestra. He was just uh, filled with beauty. He had glam you know precious stones on him um and basically it says 
He also walked back and forth on the mountain of God. That means he also had duty on earth. So the mountain of God is referring to Israel because God refers to Israel as his, uh, you know, footstool. So basically he, he had some duties to do on earth. So that means his um, rank wasn't just only a cherub. He was also an archangel as well, because archangels in the Bible, you get uh, in the book of Revelation, it talks about Michael, uh, the warfare angel, which is an archangel. And you also have heard about a Gabriel. Gabriel was also an archangel. He uh, brought messages to people and one of which was Mary. Uh, and, um, and, you know, and basically he said to her that she's going to conceive. So he wasn't only a cherub, but he was also an anointed cherub and he was splendid and basically it says he was he was proud his his beauty lifted him up and he thought he could be above god in the first verse i read in isaiah he said he could he thought he could elevate himself above god and god threw him down from the third heavens to the earth okay so what happened there is that uh he had no dominion then when he came when he, god threw him down he took his beauty off him and he said i reduced you to ashes and you're just going to basically in the book of genesis it says you know uh, you're gonna you you're gonna be the lowest basically now what he did is he was very crafty because obviously uh, he was an anointed cherub that fell and he knew how to uh, you know deceive adam and eve and what happened is when he deceived adam and eve they gave him dominion and he went into the, he, he became the father of the world, basically, uh, the earth. He gave Adam and Eve, when they gave him dominion, he became the father of the earth. So that meant God couldn't do anything because, uh, regarding that because Adam and Eve willfully listened to Satan instead of God. And when their children were born, born basically, they were under the dominion of sin. Why? Because Satan that is his name now is not lucifer anymore is in dwelling in the second heavens which is above earth it's where the air is and his kingdom is there now the bible also says when he fell it says in revelation 20, 12 9 you can read this for yourself revelation is the last book of the bible he says that when he was thrown down with uh, to the earth a third of the angels who also sinned with him came as well why because they worshipped him because he was so anointed he actually deceived you know, a third of the angels in heaven. That doesn't mean to say heaven doesn't have any angels now, but what it means is he brought a lot of angels down. Now, what's happened to these angels? What's happened to these, you know, uh, you know, fallen angels that are now operating in a demonic activity is that Satan has his kingdom in the second heavens, the Bible says. These angels are also from different ranks, the different ranks of angels in the Bible, it says, you get the seraphims that are on the top. You get cherubims. Obviously, he was the only cherub that sinned. Um, and set, the seraphims are covering God. So they are still, you know, up with God in heaven covering him. But, it, you know, he brought the lower ranked angels down with him. And then we have also like archangels and we have earthly angels who don't have wings, the Bible says. And I, you know, I can give you verses on that as well. So what these angels now do is these angels operate nations. Uh, ki the kingdom of Satan is in a way where it now is operating nations. Why? Because um, Satan has dominion over the earth. And what that means is that every time uh, God's angels from the third heaven want want to come to earth to bring messages they have to go through a warfare in the second heavens and even when you're praying sometimes your prayers can be delayed because of things like that and i'm going to go into details with this okay uh, but the passage that i want to read to you is from ephesians 6 12 i'm speaking fast because i want this video to not go wrong because i had challenges last week so in the book of ephesians um, actually, I'll read it from the Easy Version Bible so it's easier for to understand. It's really, really interesting. Uh, you know, if you can actually um, get the Bible for yourselves to read these passages, that's what, that will be wonderful. So Ephesians 6, 12, it says... Duh, 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 duh. I keep going past it. It says... Uh, 
we as human beings are not fighting against flesh and blood. That means we're not fighting against each other. We might sometimes look at each other and say, oh, I hate that person or that person did this or that person murdered that person. That, But the Bible is saying our fight is not with the flesh. OK, it's saying our fight is against the evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world against the mighty powers in the dark world and against evil spirits in the heavenly pla in the heavenly places so it's telling you very clearly that our war on earth is not against each other as human beings you know we're not the ones that are um you know um trying to kill each other in terms of like um our human nature what happens is there's demonic things that are operating in the world that are driving people to do certain things that they shouldn't be doing and because they're ignorant of this uh, people think it's automatically uh, you know uh, in the nature of of themselves that they're doing this but what happens is that if we actually are not listening to the right voice which is the bible uh, we are deceived so what happens is we're, we're listening to satan and satan tells you you know um hate that person do this do that do the other and what god is saying is our fight is not against flesh and blood we need to be spiritually awakened to understand who we're fighting with okay so there is a spiritual world that god is telling us to be mindful of he's saying that you know you can get easily attacked by being so ignorant not understanding uh, that there is that spiritual realm where satan is operating and he's got angels and these angels are actually operating in different nations they're operating in different ranks and they also have demons under them and demons i'm going to talk about in the next video it's long now in the bible uh, there is a passage uh, regarding daniel uh, the book of daniel i really love the book of daniel and i love daniel because um, daniel was a very noble man you know from a very young age he was very faithful to god he actually practiced the word of god and god granted him visions and dreams and daniel was very uh, you know uh, anointed as a person and basically he was also known as the wise man in uh, persia in the sort of like the province of Persia where he was exiled there to Babylon and basically the king of Persia and so we're looking at Cyrus and Darius you know they wanted his wisdom they 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 knew he I mean this guy was so faithful that he was thrown in the lion's dens for trying to worship the right god and people you know said that because he wasn't worshiping statue gods they threw him in the lion's dens because he was not worshiping the king's statue and then there was another time where he was thrown in the midst of the fire with three of his friends Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego and basically what happened is that uh, you know there was a fourth man in in the fire and that man was Jesus and he brought them out and they were not harmed so when God is for you nothing can be against you okay now in the bible book of Daniel now this is what I want to get your attention in the book of Daniel uh, chapter 10 verse 13 it says that Daniel was a prayer a praying man he prayed all the time and he also got visions and dreams from God and it says here in verse 13 where am I 10 it says that uh, an angel said to Daniel do not be afraid Daniel since the first day you began to pray for understanding and to humble yourself before your God your request has been heard in heaven I have come in answer to your prayer so this is an angel talking to Daniel I've come in answer to your prayer but for 21 days the spirit prince of the king of Persia blocked my way that spirit prince is a fallen angel that's operating in the second heavens so what he's saying is that God you know uh, you humbled yourself God heard you pray but I was held up for 20 days, it's saying, because of this prince of Persia. This prince is operating, it's a, an angel, a fallen angel that's been operating in Persia. And throughout the Bible, what you'll see is they, they, they talk about the prince of, you know, Greece, the prince of this, the prince of that. So that it shows you that these uh, fallen angels in the second heavens have dominion over humanity and basically countries and, uh, you know, uh, what goes on so this angel that was trying to bring Daniel his answer from God had to really fight to get to Daniel why because 
Satan has rightfully got dominion in the second heavens because of what Adam and Eve did. Okay, and um, Daniel is one of my favorite books. Um, I don't know, um, you know, if uh, you know the name Daniel is it's a beautiful name. Daniel, basically, if you it has two meanings. Dan is one of the tribes of Israel and it means judgment or uh, to be judged. And uh, El is the name of one of the names of God. It means Elohim. And uh, Daniel means the judgment of God or God has judged. So what a beautiful name. Absolutely love the book of Daniel. And um, so just bringing to your attention uh, just because these fallen angels exist and they're in the second heavens, that doesn't mean to say that you're on your own. God also has high level of angels. You know, obviously these fallen angels belong to God. So God's going to punish them one day. Their time is going to come. They know their time is short. They cannot repent. And the reason why they can't repent like we can, we can be forgiven of our sins because we were deceived but they stood in the glory of God and yet they denied God. And for that reason, God cannot forgive them. OK, and I know this because I read the book of uh, Enoch. Enoch was the grandfather of Noah. And even though it's not in the Bible, in the Bible, there is a reference. It says it is written in the book of Enoch. So I read this book and it says that the fallen angels went to Enoch, who had a good right standing with God, Enoch. And they tried to plead with him to try and get God to you know, forgive them, but God could not forgive them because obviously they saw the glory of God and they did what they did. However, we can be forgiven and that's through the blood of Jesus Christ. Okay. Now there are angels in heaven. Some of them are mentioned in the Bible and there might be more, but we don't know about maybe. So seraphims are the highest rank. Then we get the cherubims, which was Lucifer. And obviously the, there are other cherubs, but Lucifer was the anointed one. He was the angel of music angel leader of music praise and worship he was also an archangel uh, that did work on the earth and god threw him on the earth okay and then we have living creatures and we also have earthly angels that don't have wings as well and um i will mention that to you um soon so basically um as you can tell hollywood really is taking off you know and the music industry takes off if you look at the content of the music industry and content you can see how this fallen angel lucifer who was actually a, a worship angel has now you know dominated his own kind of industry on earth where everything's about money sex drugs rock and roll and everything else and what he's he's doing is he's actually trying to make people look away from god so that they can basically uh you know be their own gods they can worship themselves okay so that's his opinion that's his sorry that's his position so the other thing i want to tell you is in the book of job uh, one seven, we read that Satan cannot be in too many places at once. Okay, that's an, a, a character of uh, Satan. God can be in ev everywhere. God is omnipotent, omnipresent. Uh, God is God, you know, but Satan cannot be in different places at once. In the book of Job 1 7, we see that God says to Satan, where did you come from? And Satan says, from to and fro the earth. He was going from to and to fro to and fro the earth. So that means he wasn't in one place at the same time. So he's not in one place at the same time. I'll let you read that on your own. Uh, the other thing is Satan's job um, at the moment is to accuse the Christians, okay? Uh, you might think, oh, that's great. I'm not a Christian, so he won't accuse me. He doesn't need to accuse you if you're not a Christian. Why? Because you already are are under his domain. If you're not a Christian, I just want to tell you, if you're not a Christian, you're already under the domain of the satanic influence. Why? Because they control the second heavens. And if the blood of Jesus is not covering and you've not repented, if you've not repented, of your sins and that doesn't mean to say you're not going to do anything wrong that means that Jesus covers you protects you from these demonic things and from these fallen angels what happens is that you're under his domain you automatically do what is wrong and you automatically take pleasure in doing what doing what is wrong so he doesn't need to fight with you if you're not a Christian he doesn't need to fight with you why because you already you've already uh, you know a fallen from uh you know uh, sorry not fallen you've already uh, sort of separated uh from coming to god but you still have a chance you can still receive jesus and basically you can be protected by god and his holy angels 
and have Jesus as your Lord who will come inside you and guide you and protect you from Satan. Um, just before I tell you anything else, I when I first became a Christian, I was really scared of Satan because obviously I um, you know, I, I didn't know that God is ultimate power. And one night when I was sleeping, I had a dream about Satan and boy, he did not look scary at all. He came and I knew who he was. He came through the curtain on a couch. He was like very, very sleek. He had um, silk on him, on his shirt. He had silk trousers um, and he basically had a cigar in his hand. He literally got up from the couch. His arm was like that, got up from the couch. He circled around me. He says, Roya, why don't you bow down to me? I can give you everything. You know, you come to me. I've got everything to give you. And I'm telling you, I was shaking from fear in my dream. And in the midst of that, because I was a Christian, new Christian, Jesus spoke out of me. This is what happens when you receive Jesus. He protects you and he also gives you the authority through the Holy Spirit and he speaks through you. And I said to him, I said, you cannot give me anything, Satan. I said, go away. You cannot give me anything because you have no love to give. If you have no love to give, you cannot give me anything. So away with you. And that came through, through Jesus who protected me in my dream um, but I just want to tell you the job of Satan on earth right now is to accuse Christians um, we read in the book of Zechariah I'll let you read this for yourselves in the book of Zechariah 3 chapter 3 1 to 7 uh, Satan goes to the throne room of God from the second heavens and he says uh, he tries to uh, accuse Joshua who is a priest you know, this guy's a priest and Satan's trying to accuse him. So, and also in the book of Revelation, it tells you that his job at Revelation 12, 10, if you want to read that book of Revelation 12, chapter 12, verse 10, it says the accuser of the brethren, he accuses us. So the book of Revelation, it says he's the accuser of the brethren. That means the accuser of Christians. Okay. And so he accuses us day and night before the throne room of God. And Jesus is our intercessor. He intercesses for us. He took our sins upon himself and he pardons us. He forgives us through himself. Why? Because God himself shed his blood for us. Um, the other thing you need to be aware of is that it says in the book of Matthew 4, 1 to 11, he says Satan can come. Um, sorry, I'm reading the wrong verse there. Um in the, in the book of Matthew, it says that Satan can come as an angel of light. That means he can come to you, making you feel as if like you are doing something that is really good when it's actual, in actual fact it isn't good. And sometimes he can use the Bible verses against you like he did with Jesus. When Jesus was on earth, Satan tried to tempt him three times. He basically followed him around and he said, if you are the son of God, first he tried to use the word if to try and make him feel as if he is not the son of God. He didn't the word of, you know, as if to say you're not the word of God. Then he basically tried to tempt him to show his power by turning a stone into bread. And Jesus says, man does not live on bread alone, but by the word of God as well. Jesus is the word of God himself. So he knew that Satan was using the wrong Bible verses. He can use the wrong Bible uh, to, uh, verses um, to basically make you do the wrong thing. He said to Jesus, if you fall from the mountain, the angels of God will surely protect you and, uh, you know, uh, keep your feet from, you know, touching the ground. He didn't actually say a lie. That was a Bible verse. But what he did is he was trying to manipulate Jesus to throw himself off the cliff so he could test God. And J Jesus came to him and he says, uh, it is also written that you shall not put the Lord your God to test. So Satan is very crafty, guys. He knows he knows the word of God inside out. He's not afraid of Christians, by the way. You might think to yourself, oh, I go to church. You know, I'm protected. Yes, you're protected by the blood of Jesus. You're covered. But Satan is not afraid of, you know, of you uh, just reading Bible verses. He knows them all, you know. Even demons know that Jesus is the son of God. And I'll tell you that in the next video. Uh, but Satan is not afraid of that. He even goes to ch some churches that are not in God. And he has a right, you know, good time in there. Uh, what makes him afraid? And I'm going to give you the key here. What makes Satan afraid 
is that if he knows you're a born again Christian and you know you know how to use your authority over him why because when Jesus comes inside of you as a born again Christian his blood covers you you are actually above him so he has no domain over you and that means you can whenever he tries to tempt you or whenever he tries to uh, you know come against you you say in the name of Jesus Christ I come against that word I come against that action I come against it and what happens is he has no choice but to listen why because the word that's coming from you is from Jesus who is inside of you and he said in John 14 and I'm going fast because I don't want this video to end really quick in the book of John 14 verse 13 to 14 Jesus said and ask me ask me for anything and he said I can do it for you I will do it why when you're a born again Christian he's inside of you and he says if you ask me I will do it so Satan has no um no chance of not listening to Jesus why because Jesus basically redeemed us and he took uh you know um the power of death out of us uh, if we are willing to receive that okay so satan has no domain over born again christians who know how to use their authority if you're not a born again christian and you try to use your authority against satan he won't listen to you uh, there is a bible verse and i'm going to go through this in the next video of uh, you know of how demons operate where some people were seeing jesus performing miracles and what happened is that they tried to do the same and they hadn't received, you know, Christ in their hearts. They hadn't received the blood of Jesus or were not born again. And what happened is when they tried to rebuke a demon out of a demon possessed person, that demon spoke back to them and saying, um, this was after Jesus obviously resurrected and gave power to the church. Some people saw the apostles doing miracles and they thought they could do the same without receiving Jesus. So they went up and tried to rebuke a demon. And what happened is that demon spoke back to them and says, I know Paul, I know Silas, I don't know you. And what happened is it tormented that person that was trying to cast him out. And that person ended up walking, you know, running around naked because that demon was tormenting him. So I wouldn't I would not advise you to cast out demons or to, you know, do anything th that is um, unless you've received Jesus first, unless you're for him. Jesus says, if you're for me, you know, if you're if you're for him, you're not against him. A kingdom uh, cannot be divided against itself. So if you love Jesus and you receive him in your heart and, you know, uh, receive him as your Lord and Savior, he will protect you. So uh, basically, um, what I want to tell you is that um, there is a time coming where Satan will be thrown back on the earth. Um, this His time is very short now. We are seeing that Bible prophecies are coming to pass. What What's going to happen now is that he is going to be at some point in Revelation 12, 7 to 12. It says, read that please, the last book of the Bible. It says Revelation 12, 7 to 12. It says, that archangel Michael is going to fight him in the second heavens and he's going to be thrown back down to the earth in the last day when there's going to be a mega, mega corruption going on on earth and the church will be taken to heaven to Jesus uh, and then the corruption will happen. He will be thrown down on earth and he will use a man of Antichrist to rule the whole nations and basically he will make everybody's life a living hell. So I would probably advise you to receive Jesus and follow him and to not continue if you're not a Christian on earth okay so um, then the last thing I want to say is just before I finish I hope you've enjoyed this I have because I'm going to get this on YouTube now I'm going to put a, a video of an ex-Satanist who's now a Christian called John Ramirez in the description box below please please watch his testimony it shows you how the kingdom of Satan is real as well as the kingdom of God is real. You have two forces fighting against each other and we're like a bit like piggy in the middles, but we need to choose the right path, okay? So until next time, I bless you and I pray that if you are having any kind of attacks going on in your life, if you're depressed, anxious, if there's things going on, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke that spirit that is trying to operate in your life. I bind it and I cast it out and I declare healing to your body, to your household, and I speak uh, for joy to come into your life again. So until next time, everybody bless you and take care for now.